What's up everyone, I'm Twisted and today we'll be going over this new trailer that just dropped called Blood, Sweat and Tears, which is promoting both Arcane but also this new skin line for League of Legends called Chosen of the Wolf. Here we'll be going frame by frame through the trailer, so if you haven't watched it already, please do so. I should have a link in the description, the trailer is really good, so go watch it first. Uh, and I'm sure that if you did, you have a lot of questions about it and I'll tell you right now that I probably won't be able to answer them. Uh, we don't have all the information yet, this literally just dropped like an hour or two ago at the time that I'm recording this, uh, so we don't really know how this fits within the story of Arcane, if it's canon or if it's, if it's just a promotion for a new skin line. I'll tell you right now that I think some shots will be in the show, I think some shots will be canon or not necessarily canon because uh, the music video seems to be kind of an exploration of Ambessa's past and her psyche in a like surreal way, right? So not hard, hard canon, but I do believe that some shots are an exploration of canon Ambessa, but some shots I think are more for promotional material, for example this one right here, uh, but we'll go over that as we go through the video. But something that I want to say right off the bat is the main theme here. We know that Ambessa, as a character, she's all about legacy. She cares about her family, but what she cares the most is about the legacy of her family. And throughout the video, we are going to see the themes of legacy, but also family and sacrifice, and obviously death, as you'll see, uh, which are all themes that appear in the first season of Arcane and are like central themes to the story. For example, family, I don't think I even need to explain, but we have uh, Vi and Jinx, as well as their relationship with Vander and Silco. Uh, we have legacy explored deeply with Victor, that's kind of like the main thing about the character in season one, in my opinion. So it makes sense for season two to still follow up on these core themes. And that's what we are at least going to see in this trailer as well. So the trailer starts in this shore and right now it's really vague where this is, but by the end of the trailer, we'll know where this takes place. Uh, but you can see here various uh, of the Noxian Madarda soldiers with arrows on them. Surprisingly enough, the arrows look Noxian, right? They don't look Ionian, but I'm not sure what to think of it. Maybe I'm, I'm overthinking it. And here we see the first shot of young Ambessa. As you can see, she looks much younger. She doesn't have the gray hair yet. And she's pregnant. Again, family is an important theme in this trailer. And the first shot that we see of uh, Ambessa is that of her laying on the ground, wounded and pregnant. I think that these shots, where she is in this shore right here, are canon uh, and are going to be kind of sort of like what we had in season one, where almost every single episode started with a flashback of a specific champion, be it of Victor when he was younger or Mel uh, and her mother when Mel was younger, right? We had all those flashbacks. I think in season two, we might have a flashback for Ambessa, right? Because Ambessa is going to have a bigger role in season two. It makes sense to explore her further. And what we see here, wolf, but not just any wolf. I believe that this is the wolf part of the kindred, or at least like from Ambessa's perspective, right? Because the kindred are spirits, and though we know what they, I guess, truly look like, quote unquote, because that's the base design that we see in the game, there's nothing to say that they can, like, look slightly different depending on the person that's observing them, right? And obviously, if you are seeing the kindred, that means that you are near death. And she's seeing the wolf, and Ambessa's actually has a lot of like themes about the wolf. She speaks about the wolf and the fox in season one. She also has a couple quotes about her being a wolf or, or having a wolf mentality in League. And obviously wolf represents the part of the kindred that's supposed to be fleeing from death or not accepting death, right? Fighting to stay alive. And that obviously fits Noxins and Ambessa well enough. And here is where we transition into the second like set or area of this trailer which is kind of like this hall i'm not sure what to call it and there's this figure right here which we'll learn who who this is in a bit uh but yeah this is the second area uh of the trailer and in this area we see like this like kind of like avatar or a spiritual form of ambassa 
already like a hint that whatever is happening is not really real. It's not really, really happening, right? This is some kind of a vision or a metaphor for what Ambessa is going through or went through. But I just want to say like, look how pretty this is. Like the, the colors and the textures look so good, right? She almost looks like a person, but also like a statue, like something that was carved and had like human hands on it. Like it, it looks so good. And then we transition into the third area right here. And I have to say that this is, if the last one was clearly, clearly some kind of vision or metaphor, then this one is even more so, right? We have like these, all these people that I don't even really know if they are real or not, or if this is just uh, some kind of, again, metaphor for something in Ambessa's life. Because these could just be people wearing masks, but then you see like these tall people right here that don't really have like feet. So if this is real, this is, these aren't humans, right? But I do believe that this is not like real. Then we have like these right here, which kind of remind me of Zeraf's followers in LOR, which I don't believe it's the case, but that's at least what these remind me of. Uh, and here we can see some kind of artifact that is wolf themed, that this will also become relevant in a bit. And also Ambessa here is carrying an artifact as well of a lamb. Uh, obviously, lamb is another part of the kindred that represents a peaceful death or at least accepting death, accepting that you will die and not fight it. Just let it happen. Yeah, in this area as well looks really kind of alien and dreamlike. I've seen some people say that this might be Shurima. I don't think this is a real place. And here we have, how many are we? The, the fourth, fourth area, I think. And the first thing that we see is the statue of Ambessa, how she looks right now. We've seen this look in the trailers for season two. And this area right here is going to show us more of these statues of Ambessa at different points in her life. And here we see like this Ambessa. I was going to say current Ambessa, but technically this is past Ambessa. Looking at current Ambessa, it's a bit confusing. Uh, but you can see like her reaction to how she will look like or the person that she will be, right? Which is interesting. And then we see here this shot of what is obviously a Pantheon skin, right? That, this is what I mean when I say that this video is both promoting Arcane, but also promoting this new skin line. And thus, like, some shots are probably in the show, and some like this probably aren't. That's not to say that this is entirely based on an alternate universe. This could be like a Spirit Blossom situation where these skins represent entities or characters that might or may not exist in the canon universe. But the, obviously the champions are not those characters, right? For example, Spirit Blossom Ari represents the Gatekeeper. The Gatekeeper, we don't know if it exists in the canon universe, but we know that there are myths and legends about them, right? But Ari herself is not the Gatekeeper, is not related to the Gatekeeper in any way, shape or form, right? And the same applies to all the Spirit Blossom skins, except Kindred, because, well, at least before LOR, there was just one, or I guess two if you count uh, the Kindred as two separate beings, two separate spirits of death, right? And Ionian Kindred is just what the Ionians think Kindred looks like, because we know what Kindred looks like. That's not what, what she looks like. Th that's just the Ionian interpretation. So that skin is also not canon, but it's a bit more canon than the other ones. And this is why I'm a bit skeptical about these skins being like Spirit Blossom, because Spirit Blossom is already really confusing, right? The amount of times that I had to explain this to people is already a lot and it's confusing, it's confusing. But yeah, I do think that this is Pantheon, but if this isn't Pantheon, then this is going to be a skin for Pantheon representing another character, right? But I do believe that this is all like alternate universe-ish stuff, at least for now. Uh, something to mention here is that his shield has like a star with three points, which is really close to the Madarda crest, right? It's the Madara Crest is basically this, but with an extra point. 
and I've seen a lot of people speculating that this could be Targonian or at least related to the Rakor or the Solari, but to me at least, uh, the armor looks very Noxian. We see that like these angular and straight edges all over it, and we also see the statues right here, which are based on Noxian writing, right? So I believe that this is 100% just a Noxian inspired skin, and we'll see that with the other skins as well, but just gold because I guess that's the team that they went for, right? And also, there's a couple of like, this might be me like misinterpreting, but I think like there's a lot of like wolf symbolism as well. For example, the shape of the shield right here kinda looks like a wolf, again, kinda, and he also has like a symbol here that sort of looks like a wolf. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I think it would make sense with all the teams uh, in this video. And I forgot to mention, but here we have like another area. This is more, more like a golden like arena hall sort of thing. And here we see Ambassador fighting Pantheon. And like that the animation is just so good. Like look at the lights just like moving. Look at this. So good. Like look at this shot right here. Like almost every shot from this trailer could just be like framed and put on a wall. It's just so beautiful. And then we transition back into this area and you can see that it's kind of, like, of like this Ambassa is like experienced the same thing as the other Ambassa. It's kind of hard to explain because probably neither of the Ambassas is real, but it's almost like this Ambassa right here is going through some kind of test, right? And the scenes that we see in this area is the test that is happening like inside her head or something like that, right? And then we go back to this flashback, or I guess to this scene in the desert. And again, we see Ambessa holding a lamb. And I'm really curious as to what the lamb represents. Again, lamb represents accepting death or having a peaceful death, right? But we also have like real world interpretations for what the lamb represents, right? Innocence, purity, etc. And obviously, this is a video about sacrifice and again Ambessa is a warrior that is pregnant right so this could also be her like sacrificing her life or sacrificing you no know, aspects of her life because she was going to have a, a child or for her child right but also her just accepting the life of a warrior right i think that's also a good interpretation of it again we see another statue of Ambessa. this time this should be like present Ambessa, at least present in relation to the trailer, right? Because we first we saw like Ambessa uh, as she appeared in season two. Now we're seeing Ambessa as she appears in this trailer or throughout the trailer. At least I believe this is Ambessa. This is probably the statue that looks the least like her. But I believe like this has to be Ambassador because the other two statues, uh, one we haven't seen yet, do look like her. And also we see all, like all these people dancing around her. I think th these are supposed to represent these people right here. And also I just noticed like the people in the background almost look like what Wolf looks like in League, right? Just the head with the fur. That's interesting. But yeah. Here we can see like this lamb right here, which is made of like some kind of like copper or metal, right? It's very reminiscent of that hex core thing slash anomaly that we've seen in the trailers. So I wonder if that entity or that object is giving visions to all the characters, or at least to one Bessa. Uh, that would be an interesting way to justify how they are including scenes like this in Arcane, right? A scene that is like clearly clearly very uh, metaphorical, very artistic. Here is why I think the lamb represents the sacrifice or Ambessa letting go of a part of herself, likely because of her children or because she's becoming a warrior, because she's literally letting go of the lamb in this shot, right? The lamb that before, in previous shots, she was holding tight, almost protecting it from uh, the people around her. Now she's letting it go. Just, these character designs are so cool. Like, these are just, like, background characters, but, like, this is awesome. And it's in sync with the music. I'm so sad that I can't show it, but, like, this part right here, like, so good. 
and now we go back to this scene. And notice now Ambessa has a bunch of scars already. I'm pretty sure like in the previous shot she didn't. And those scars are almost like golden, right? Which again makes sense, like for a warrior, scars are like trophies, right? Oh, so good, man. The, the reflection, look at this. So good. And then Penton just headbutts her. And again, transitions back into this shot just like before when he hit her. But this time, uh, Penton is going to overwhelm her. But she doesn't give up, which is very in line with like Penton as a character, right? Pentin is not about being the best warrior or the strongest. Pentin, or I guess I should say Atreus, is about never giving up, always getting back up, right? That's what his character is all about, and that's why that's why his latest story uh, is really sad, because that's the story where he finally breaks down and wants to give up, right? So cool, like, again, look how, how pretty this is. Like, Fortis just, they just know it, man. Also, Pentian here with uh, white hair, which again makes me think that this is not like canon, because if it was, then this would have to be like another aspect of war, like another Pentian, not the Treyas. And then boom, she gets W'd by Pentian, stunned for like a second, but she doesn't give up. And then we go back again to this scene, and we can see like how these beans could almost be like a representation of her anxiety or like the expectations from society or like from her father for her to become a warrior, right? In season one, we learned that her father made her pick up swords from the battleground in exchange for gold or like for coin. And obviously that wasn't for her to like earn money. That was for her to learn the cost of war, right? To learn that there is death. Uh, in, her, in the life that she will have to like uh, pursue and again the lamb represents the opposite right represents her before that life or it could also just represent her child as well right but I do think it represents like the sacrifices that she had to do to have that child or for that child and you can see it like breaking apart and again here we see an even younger Ambessa with a lamb Right, this was her before this life. And like you can see like how sad she is, right? This is a part of her that she had to let go. She is no longer this person. Like this is the only like depiction of her from the tree that we've seen that m actually makes her cry. But this is also like the one like, if we go by the trailer and by the way that this is framed, this is also the one that makes her not give up, right? The fact that she has a child, the fact that she has a legacy that needs to continue is what makes her stand back up again, right? And we can see here that she's standing back up again, full of these golden scars. Like, she didn't win, but she is still fighting. And we can see that Pantheon is going to do the opposite that he did at, at the beginning. At the start of the battle, he opened the shield. Now he's closing it, like... The, the test, the challenge is over. She didn't give up, she didn't surrender, she's worthy. And obviously, right here we can see all the upcoming skins, except two, uh, but we'll get to those. We see here Swain, Pantheon, and I believe this is Katarina. And all of them have this black and gold armor, as well as the red Noxian tattoos. And then we go back to that scene with like the kind of spectral, ghostly Ambessa. And who do we see here but the lamb? And then we're going to go back to the scene where she was watching all the versions of herself, right? This time she's climbing these stairs to get to a throne. We'll see that in a bit. We go back to Kindred and look at the design of this Kindred, right? Oh, I guess I should say of this lamb. In their like default skins based designs, uh, the lamb obviously has a wolf mask and the wolf has a lamb mask, but we can see here that this wolf mask is like much darker, much more fitting of a deity that would be worshipped uh, by Noxians. And even the design of 
lamb herself or her body, right? There's no like white, there's no purity, no innocence. This is uh, a deity of war and death. It's so cool, right? And also, I am assuming that this is what Noxians see Kindred as, or at least what they imagine Kindred is. But that could very well not be the case. But that's at least my interpret interpretation for now. Again, we don't really have all the information yet. And we see Ambessing, and again, she was climbing the stairs, now she's looking at the sword next to a throne. She's accepting her role as the, I guess, like the leader of her family, right? As the one that has to carry on the legacy. And we see that object that we saw before with the, that represented the wolf. And we go back to this scene and you can see the lamb getting fully destroyed. There's no lamb anymore, there's no innocence. That life of her that she had when she was young is no more. Now she is the matriarch of war. Now she's the leader of the Madarda. Now she's a warrior and a mother. And I, I think that's what this uh, video represents as a whole, right? Is the journey of Ambessa becoming that, right? Look at here. She's taking this, she's taking uh, the legacy of her family with her own hands, right? She's sitting on the throne. And here, this is her after letting go of the lamb, right? The sacrifice. And here she's accepting it. This is her now. And we see here that she's sitting on the same throne that she was, uh, or at least that the statue of her was, the statue that looks like what she looks like in season two, right? It was during, I guess, that battle that we see at the beginning. It was during that point that maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, her father died or whoever was the leader of the Madarda before her died. And that was the moment that she became the heir of the family, the matriarch. It's so, like, it's this is so pretty. Like, the, like the crystals around her, the texture of these, like, I don't even know what this is, but like on her face and stuff, it's so, so, like, Good, and the, the expression is so well done, right? These aren't real people, but they, they feel, they feel real. And here we get a better look of the tattoos, and we can see here that, yes, this is just Noxian writing. I don't think there's anything Targonian or Rakor or Solari about this. So epic, so good. Man, I, I, I just love Fortiche, like, they are just so good at what they do, like. And then we get the transition of her after getting this power, and now a bit older as well. And obviously this should be the design of the new skin. And we see here, Ambessa next to Pantheon, Swain, and Katarina, and we see that she has, like, much longer hair, which... I guess side note, but I wonder how this is going to work for a skin. Are they like, did they prepare the rig that she has for this hair? Or is the hair just going to be static on the skin? I'm, I'm really curious about that. And we're going to see her flash through all the locations. First is like Golden Arena, then the one where we saw all the flashbacks, then the one where she had to sacrifice the lamb. And I guess this one was supposed to be the one where she got that object from Lamb, right? But there, she's going to feel something. Something else is going to happen, I think. If I'm not misremembering. Yeah. Here we see the shots of the baby in her belly, right? Again, at the start of the video, it was kind of easy to miss because of the, the, the angle, right? I almost thought that that was just armor. But then we see this shot of like, oh no, she is pregnant. Again, tying to the themes of legacy, sacrifice, which is what Ambessa is all about. And we see here that all this gold, right? Look, look at the gold shining in front of her. And then, boom, that gold is almost like it's a continuation, right? Right here, the gold is, is going from left to right. Then we get a shot of the, the baby, then left to right. Then we get a shot of the baby, the gold is still going left to right, and then 
Boom. The shot of the baby shows us the gold going from left to right. Oh wait, I've been saying left to right, I mean right to left. Oops. I'm not sure who the baby is. This is either Mel, which I think uh, makes sense from a narrative standpoint, but this could also be Mel's brother, right? Uh, I don't know if we ever got a confirmation that Mel is the younger or the older sibling, so it's possible that Mel is actually the older one, and this is like Ambessa's first child, uh, because she does look kinda young still, right? And obviously not impossible that this is her second child and Mel is the younger sibling, but either way, I think this makes more sense to be Mel, right? Especially with the last shot uh, from season 2, where we see the gold armor that Mel has shining as the rocket is about to hit the council. And I also made a, a recent like prediction uh, in a short about it, how in Wild Rift we get this hint that Mel, Jace and Victor survive because the, there's an area in the council around their seats that is completely unaffected by the explosion. And I believe that Mel somehow managed to save uh, Victor and Jace and obviously the gold plate shining kind of give us a hint that that might be how she did it. And here we are getting like this baby that is probably Mel with kind of like a gold energy surging through them. Again, I don't think this is like Kindred gave power to Ambessa and Ambessa gave that power to her child when she had them. And Mel, when she was about to get hit by Jinx's rocket, Mel used the Kindred's magic and survived. I don't think that's the case. I think this is more like a metaphor for something. I don't really think that there's going to be like a direct connection to Kindred, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. These are just theories and speculation at the moment. But yeah, then we get back to the first area, the one uh, during the war where the wolf was checking out Ambessa before she blacked out. And we see here that Ambessa passed the test, right? She was about to die. She saw the wolf, the part of the kindred that represents fleeing from death and we see here that she succeeded right the wolf doesn't want anything to do with her she's not near death anymore she has passed the challenge or like did not succumb to death and you can see here the ring that we've seen in the recent ambassador poster and never do this guys if you get hit by an arrow don't take it out this is not something that you should do you're going to bleed to death if you do this but well and we get the reveal of where this all happened. It was in Ionia. But also we see here like a blast right around her, which is interesting. I wonder if that was from whoever attacked the Madardanoxians or if there was something else that happened, right? Something a bit more magical. Uh, I'm more inclined to believe that this was like the Ionians fighting back or the land of Ionia fighting back. but. Who knows? But yeah, either way, this is clearly happening during the first invasion of Ionia, right? Which is, you know, really good because obviously Arcane and the whole lore retcon that is currently happening, it's good to see that there are characters and connections between the world and Arcane and like actual events that we've known uh, that happen in the universe like for years, right? But yeah, this was the trailer. Again, there's a lot of scenes like this one that I believe are canon. I believe this will happen in the show. Even if it doesn't happen in the show, it might be like an enemy situation where I do believe that these things happen, even if they are not revealed in the show. But obviously there are some shots here, like the ones with the skins, where I don't think these happen at any point in time. Unless these skins are supposed to represent uh, entities or characters that are myths or legends or part of this uh, metaphor that the best is going through, right? I'm more inclined to believe that that won't be the case, but again, this is already really confusing. It's better to just wait and see uh, how this develops. Something else I want to mention here that also ties into all these themes are obviously the lyrics, right? We can see here, and I start till there's no more mouths to feed, tying in the themes of her being a mother that has to take care of her children. And also we get these lines, there's a hand on my throat and a blade at my feet, which then gets changed to there's a hand on my throat and a child at my feet, right? There's another 
responsibility that she earned. She's no longer just a warrior, she's also a mother. But yeah, overall, uh, I think this was a really, really amazing trailer, right? Uh, regardless of whether it's canon or not, this is just a piece of animation and music that is so, like, well done, which is to be expected from Fortish. I hope uh, there's a bit more to this than just skins. I hope that this is indeed, like, a Noxian interpretation of the kindred uh, i think that would be really interesting uh, that's something that they haven't really explored much at least in skins we've only seen the ionian kindred but yeah i'm really excited i just want to know more uh, about ambassa's past what she had to go through to become the warrior and the mother that she is i think like this is just so interesting this is so in line with all the teams that we've seen so far in the show and i just when I want more, I want the show already. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this trailer and its themes, its story, as well as the skins down below. If I missed anything, also let me know. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It's free and you can always change your mind later. And with this being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.